everyone, it's Tony D, and I wanted to give you a positive message of hope. Uh, I'm going to try not to slip into a rant, because I tried this positive message of hope, and I slipped into another rant. So, um, I was watching Sticks and Hammer 666, and he, of course, said, it's always darkest before the dawn, and that's kind of where we are now. We're in a very dark time. So it's, uh, it's, it's been dark before in 2020, uh, and during the Trump presidency, right? In the beginning, we had... Well, just the whole election, quite frankly. Everybody said, we're doomed, we're doomed. It's just like uh, Dr. Smith in Lost Space. We're doomed, utterly doomed. Um, and then, you know, we had the North Korean missile crisis. Oh, my God. Trump's going to start World War III. Oh, my God, he's going to start World War III. Didn't happen. In fact, things turned out great on that front. Then it was, all oh, the Mueller case. Finally, we've gotten Trump. We got him. He's going to be impeached. Didn't happen. And then the Ukraine case, which that was like sort of like Mueller light, really. I mean, it was terrible. Uh, and that didn't happen either. And, uh, you know, there's more talk of impeachment. Then this virus hit. People said, aha, now, now we're doomed. <laughs> now the riots are here and people are saying, oh my God, what is happening to the world? Well, you know, when you look back on it with a little perspective, you can see that something like this was bound to happen. I mean, when you ask people to sit at home and not work for weeks and weeks and weeks, and then something triggers them, there you go. Riots. I mean, I'm not sure the riots would have been as bad had the beer virus not had happened, right? I mean, partly... Not that I'm saying the media shouldn't cover this, but I'm saying the media probably exacerbated the problem, as they often do, with uh, this particular news event and others that they don't even report. So right around the same time George Floyd was killed by the police, uh, there was this kid, I think his name was Tony like Riga or something, and he was suffocated by the police. And he also, too, begged for his life. And then the cops joked about it after they killed him. Because they didn't realize they had killed him. And uh, they kind of like, you know, come on, come on, Tony, get up, get up. You know, you sleeping? Like that kind of joking around. But they killed the guy. They suffocated him. Cops do that. They have uh, too much power, in my view. I wouldn't completely depower the cops, but I would definitely... Uh, create a system under which they would not be allowed to hurt people quite so much. I would encourage them to uh, not just immediately start attacking people and bossing them around. There's all kinds of problems you could talk about in the police. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. That's like a 10-hour video. So many problems with the cops. And it depends on the part of the country. And, uh, you know, uh, there, there are problems. They're good cops. They're good cops. I know cops. I know people have been cops. I'm related to cops. Look, they have a tough job. And uh, um, and we need something to believe in, you know, as a, as a society, I guess. We need to have somebody to, I don't know, show up when the branches fall out of the trees and knock out the... Uh, the stoplight to direct traffic, you know, I mean, I guess anybody could do that really if they wanted to, but you know, I think we're all willing to chip in to pay for a guy to do that in emergencies. It's just that things have just gotten so out of hand. And it seems that people's reaction is to get more out of hand in order to get the attention, which does work in the short term, but in the long term doesn't really change anything. What you want to do is have long-term change. And you actually have a president who effected long-term change on prison reform. Yes, Trump signed a bill that they've been trying to push for years to reform the prison system. Years. It had bipartisan support, but presidents wouldn't, wouldn't sign it for whatever reason. I, I'm not exactly sure why. I suspect it's partisan politics. If you can't give me something for signing this bill, why should I help you? That's the kind of stuff that goes on in Washington, unfortunately. 
but you had a president who's willing to sign that just for the lulls, just for a bump on Twitter. Instead, you treat him like he's an a-hole. Hey, he's kind of an a-hole, but he's not an a-hole to us. He's just an a-hole to other countries. <laughs> and usually people who don't like America. That's what you want. You want a guy who's going to do that. And he's still doing it. He didn't have to. Trump could walk away. He'd go back to his comfortable life. He'd have no regrets, I'm sure. He could lose this election. And go right back to being at home. Think about the money he makes. He think he needs this aggravation? I mean, really? This is a guy who wants to do something good with his life, I think. Yeah, I really do. I mean, what good did he do in New York? Well, he built a lot of stuff. I mean, that's something. At least he built something. He didn't destroy anything. He built something. Now, I don't particularly like his buildings, but... It's hard to argue that. I mean, he built them. <laughs> he built the Taj Mahal in Atlantic City. It's got a billion dollars worth of marble in it. Italian marble, apparently. I think it's an eyesore, quite frankly, but I mean, you look at it, and it's kind of an impressive structure. The seagulls like it, they poop on it a lot. But that's at least creation. That's at least something. It's not just constantly, I don't know, destroying things like Bush did or giving us more rules like Obama did. I'd like a system in which it's just simple, right? And in order to get that kind of simplicity, well, you need to discuss it calmly like adults can't discuss it with uh, someone like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She's not interested in a compromise. She frames things like, well, you're, you're either for it or you're some kind of jerk. You know? <laughs> you can't, how can you have a discussion with someone like that? Now you might argue that Trump's that same way. Yeah. On certain things, I mean, the guy does not like to be disrespected. No, he does not. But who does, really? In his own weird way, he's incredibly honest because he just says stuff off the top of his head. But people kind of can't take that. And they want this sort of status quo because they were invested in that status quo. But those people are animals of the Washington establishment. They're beltway beasts. And those guys have been causing the problems. Those guys really don't care. So I'm not upset at all that they cry and piss and moan about Trump. I love that they're being tortured. In my own twisted dreams of being president, that's what I would have run on to. <laughs> to be the guy. To make Congress's life miserable <laughs> if I did one thing in four years I would make Congress every congressman and every senator miserable beyond belief I would make them work I would never want to close Congress I would make them read things they'd hate me I think that makes for a healthy government because makes Congress work, makes the executive branch work. I mean, you got to think of it this way. Trump has been under such intense scrutiny. I don't think he would do anything dishonest because the guy would get blasted. He, he'd be impeached again. They're ready to impeach him. Oh, I don't mind that pressure. And I think Trump thrives on it, oddly enough. Personally, I wouldn't have thrived on that. Probably would have gotten to me eventually. But Trump never seems to bother him. It's amazing, isn't it? Guy's in his 70s. He keeps walking around, just keeps going and going and going. But I think because of that, we have a lot of hope. You know, there's a lot of things to look forward to this summer. I know, I know, it's been crazy. But these riots are going to end. 
and hopefully by the end of this summer we can all go back to life as normal and people can go back to studying the virus finding cures uh, we can go back to building an economy that makes sense and uh, hopefully after this elections behind us Democrats will actually acknowledge that Donald Trump is the president.